Hey, Ronnie. Hey, Lou. Did you know? Uh, first, before we get to that, do you believe in aliens? Yes. There's you, a bunch of them at the border right now. Uh, no, no, they're not that kind of alien. No. It's like from outer space aliens. Oh. Yeah, yeah, you get it. I saw the movie with them, yes. Okay. Yeah. Over 1.5 million people have now signed up for a joke event called Storm Area 51. They can't stop all of us. The event slogan is, let's see them aliens. <laughs> so, echoing a popular conspiracy theory that the U.S. military is keeping flyers, flying saucer wreckage, unearthly technology, and recovered ETs, or perhaps they're even holding live aliens. Who knows? The mass trespass is set for September 20th. Are you on board? Uh, negative. We're going to give you some details on the next Men Are So Smart. Hi there and welcome to our show. I'm Lou Gallagher. I'm Corvette Ronnie. Nice to have you here today. Thank you so much for watching. We appreciate it. So we do the hard hitting news. That's what our show's all about. So what are we bringing you today? Well, I'll tell you. 10 reasons why storming Area 51 maybe isn't a great idea. Number 10, Ronnie. Maybe? Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Number no. one. I'm sorry, number one. Uh, so the first one is, you can't handle the truth. <laughs> That was awful. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I don't do a very good uh, Tom no, Cruise. The, that wasn't Tom Cruise. Oh, yeah. Sorry, Jack. Jack, Jack Nicholson. Nicholson. Yeah. Uh, conspiracy theorists have, theorists have it that aliens are being kept secret because of fears that people would freak out. I would. If they discovered the truth. This argument is brushed aside casually in shows like The X-Files. Mm -hmm who want the truth at any cost. But what if authorities are right? Yeah, well, advanced alien uh, intelligence poses a serious threat to religious belief. Mankind may not be a uh, unique being made in the divine image as belief. And theologian Ted Peters carried out a survey in 2011 of what effect people thought alien contact would have on their religion. Wow. Strangely enough, most people thought that their own religion would remain intact, but the event would seriously challenge other faiths. Oh, yeah, it'll affect the other faiths, but not mine. Not mine. Mine's, mine's, mine's good. good. Solid. Yeah, mine is, yeah. Up front, yeah. Came from Adam and Eve. Yeah, yeah obviously. <laughs> not TR-122 and BX-133. <laughs> All right, next up on our list here, heed this... Oh, wait a minute, maybe I skipped one. But you did. Sorry. No, I didn't. I don't have number two. <laughs> Number three. I'll do number two. Do you have a two? Yeah. How did I not get a two? I don't know. Do two. All right. Uh, number two is Naruto running won't provide complete protection. In fact, none at all. I don't know what that is. Okay, well, Naruto, uh, This I'll just read this and it'll explain it in there. If we Naruto run, we can move faster than their bullets, promises the Storm Area 51 Facebook site. So here we go. The Naruto run is named after a Magna character who runs at superhuman speed with his arms stretched out behind him. Okay. Kind of like a your rocket ship pose. All right. This has spawned a host of internet memes with people uh, imitating Naruto's running style in unlikely situations. So let's just say this. Usain Bolt, who is the fastest man on the planet, Indeed, yeah. he can sprint at a top speed of about 40 feet per second. Wow, that's fast. Uh, compared to a 9mm bullet, mm. which moves at something over 1,200 feet per second. Hmm. Not uh, the same. Yeah, yeah, slightly different. I get it. Uh, also, attempts to uh, harness Naruto's technique have not been successful. Outrunning a bullet seems unlikely. Let me see if I got this straight. The same people that think they can outrun a bullet are the people that are going to charge Area 51. Right. This doesn't I'm doing well. that thing my dog does. <laughs> yeah, it ain't, it ain't going to work. Next up on our list, heed the signs. Boy, howdy. Area 51 is famously surrounded by menacing warning signs for a reason, I bet. The place is not just a Hollywood myth, it is a genuine classified defense site and as is protected as such. Ronnie, you protect a 
Oh, what's national? The, it's a national critical infrastructure. That's what I'm talking yes. about. Yes. Uh, really, do you think somebody could get through? No. No. No way. There's just not a chance. Restricted area. It is unlawful to enter this area without permission of the installation commander. Legally speaking, people, and listen to me good, if you cross that line, you are committing an offense against Section 1382 of Title 18 of entering a military installation without permission, which makes you liable for a $500 fine. But that's the least of your worries. Yeah. While on this installation, all personnel and the property under their control are subject to search. That is not an idle threat. Being caught in Area 51 means you are likely to be searched rather thoroughly. Yeah. I think you know what I mean there. I think we all know. Uh huh. And they're not going to do it just because they have to. Nope. Uh, and be left lying face down on the ground for three hours. Uh, in 2019, a man was shot dead after failing to stop at a security gate. After an eight mile chase, the man was stopped by NNSS Security Protective Force officers and Nye County Sheriff's Office and shot when he refused to follow verbal instructions and did not drop a cylindrical metal object. Believe me, read my lips. They will shoot you. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. They will. They protect it that much. Not a good idea. You know, let's I, see them aliens. I just watched a YouTube video uh, where a guy rented a private plane and he wanted to just fly over the top and get some pictures of it. Oh, okay. So, and the guy in the private plane says, they are not going to let us fly over the area. No. No. And so they get up in the area, and probably when they were about one mile out, uh, and if you haven't, nobody's seen Area 50, well, nobody alive that we know of, but it's kind of in a bowl. And so it's shrouded by mountains all around. And so just before they could really see anything, at about a mile out, air traffic controllers are telling them, you need to make a right-hand turn immediately. Fast. And at that same point, the guy looks at his uh, radar screen. And there's a blip? There are two blips. Oh, no. Rolling at him <laughs> at about 600 miles an hour. Yeah. So they scrambled a couple of F-16s. And then he noticed that the blips went out, which means that they turned off, the, I forget what he called it, but basically they turned off their contact radar. So they're going to be coming at him blind, so he doesn't know which direction they're coming oh from. Oh, my God. Uh, and so at that point, he made a hard yeah. right-hand turn yeah. and got out of there. That's a wise decision, Ronnie. I think that I think that is a good decision. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, this next one, it's no place for a vacation. Ah, oh, great. <laughs> yeah. Now you tell me. Yeah, all the I, hotels are booked. Yeah, this is the vacation time of year. Uh, site was originally chosen in 1950s as the testing ground for classified aircraft. Ah, uh, wink, wink. Uh, the selection was made by Kelly Johnson, the legendary Lockheed engineer behind the U-2 and the SR-71 programs. Johnson wanted a dry lake bed to provide a long, flat landing site. Uh, dry lake beds, by definition, occur in inhospitable de desert places, and Groom Lake, as the place was originally known, is, a, is scorching hot in the daytime, with temperatures routinely over 100 degrees. So a lot like Sacramento. <laughs> Just a little cooler. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the area also happens to be downwind of one of the original nuclear test sites. So there's some residual you know, radiation to, to deal with. Let's see them aliens. Uh, Johnson gave the secret site the ironic code name Paradise Beach. That's funny. <laughs> hey, oh, I'm sorry, Paradise Ranch. That's even funnier. Because we have Paradise Beach here. Yeah, we do. Uh, crews sent to this uh, attractive sounding location were horrified to find themselves in a place once officially described by the U.S. Army as a damn good place to dump used razor blades. I bet they got a lot of them, too. Dang, yeah. Uh, it's not a pleasant hiking terrain, either. There are no facilities, no cafes, no convenience stores, no public restrooms, and no water. So bring a hat, sunblock, and a few gallons of drink, and a Geiger counter, just to be on the safe side. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. Doesn't Ronnie. sound too good. Uh, you know, well, all right, we'll keep going with this. Look, if you're thinking about charging the base, it's a national security thing. Yeah. Okay, you don't have to around with that. Area 51 has been used for flight testing for generations of classified aircraft. 
from the early U-2 high altitude spy planes to the Mach 3 SR-71 Blackbird and the F-117 Nighthawk stealth fighter. Less well-known programs have included the Tacit Blue Stealthy Scout and a whole range of alien technology investigations, Ooh. not craft from other planets, but performance testing of Russian MiGs. These wow. operations are kept secret for good reason. Foreign powers would just love to know what goes on at Area 51 and what the next generation prototypes will look like. While satellites mean that nowhere is completely out of sight, Satellites follow predictable paths and operations can be timed to avoid their gaze. A successful invasion of the hangars and offices of Area 51 with all the pictures that would burst into the public domain would be a triumph for Russia, China, and others interested in the latest U.S. technology. Hmm, there you have it. So we don't need a violation of a national security thing. No. Uh, number six, you'll see what you want to see. Oh, no. Which is true with... A lot of things. We were just talking about this with our Forest Fen Solve latest one. Uh, intelligence agencies have long made the use of UFO community for their own purposes. Easily classified aircraft were often reported as flying saucers. In particular, the metal finish of the early U-2s catching the light at dawn or dusk high altitude made them both conspicuous and mysterious. Uh, one study in the 1950s concluded that half of the unexplained sightings were classified aircraft. Yeah, that's what they say. Which means the other half were actually UFOs. Well, there you go, if you do the math. <laughs> uh, in order to divert attention, divert attention from real pro projects, the U.S. Air Force of Special Investigation and others started feeding disinformation to UFO groups. Great. Oh, that's always sweet. Yeah, don't tell anybody. <laughs> yeah. Uh, as Mark Pinkleton's 2013 Mirage Men recounted, they allowed selected individuals to see, but not copy, fake official documents, photographs, and other evidence of alien activity to shape a whole mythology. The intelligence agencies are smart when it comes to handling information. Yeah, fake news. There you go. Right? Yeah, CNN is probably right in the middle of this. Yeah, who's providing the fake news now? <laughs> I wonder if Jim Acosta was there. Uh, the intelligence agencies are smart when it comes to ha handling information. Those storming Area 51 might get glimpses of weird-looking machinery, saucer-shaped craft parked in hangars, or even big-eyed aliens peeking out from upper windows. I love the big-eyed ones. <laughs> I really do. They're such a nice group. Yeah, the other ones, they look too. They look like they're plotting they, something. They got small eyes, yeah, big eyes. You don't need beady. that. Yeah. Nobody needs that. All right, next up on our list of why you should not charge Area 51. Well, think about what effect it might have on markets, oh. the stock market. Think about that, think about this. Companies like Apple, Microsoft, all of the money that they spend on R&D, research and development, so that they can be at the forefront of technology as it unveils itself these aliens might have information that makes our technology look like play school. They may have something equivalent to like a iPhone 12. I know, and I gotta get that. Yes, I have to have it. <laughs> so, what little work has been done on this suggests alien contact would not be good for the markets. There would be a free-for-all as everyone rushed to take advantage of the new tech. The existing order would be upended. There might be a negative effect as human science becomes irrelevant and researchers lose all their funding because somebody else already has all the answers. Assuming we survive the likely crash, on the positive side, the technology might give us unlimited free energy and an open the way to the stars. Wow. On the negative side, it might also give street gangs the firepower to obliterate entire cities. Wow. Yeah, that wouldn't be yeah, good either. No, yeah. Not looking forward to that day. No, I'm going to take that day off. I'm going to go on <laughs> vacation. Uh, next up, there is some dangerous alien tech. How do you know? Yep. Assuming the theory is correct and Area 51 is a treasure trove of advanced alien technology and reverse engineered flying saucers, then storming it is going to be met with some serious resistance. I kind of think so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, a, conventional, a conventional facility may be protected by security guards with M16s, 
But if there is alien technology involved, you can expect to be met with cyborgs and chameleon stealth suits, invisible killer drones, and energy barriers, dimension warps, and other impassable obstacles. And clowns. I know it's clowns. I know it is. I hate clowns. Yeah. Or snakes. Oh, it had to be snakes, didn't it? <laughs> and finally, what if they're keeping something in? Mm. Hmm. The human wave of a million Naruto runners brings the barbed wire crashing down and the crowd storms Area 51's administrative center. They see the controls and the blast doors grind open. The defensive systems are deactivated. The doors are unlocked. The force fields powered down. All the secrets are there to be revealed right down to the lowest, most recent 29th level sub-basement and the dreaded Nightmare Hall. I don't even know what I just said. <laughs> but before the crowd can start exploring the facility, a sanity-shattering sound emerges from the depths, from the bowels of the underground facility. Something stirs. He is freed at last from his eons-long confinement, a gigantic alien being beyond her comprehension, whose very appearance warps the mind, and with no interest in puny humans except as a tasty snack, oh my God. a slimy mass of tentacles bursts out onto the surface, and a hungry alien starts gobbling humans like popcorn. Well, you wanted to see them aliens, didn't you? And now you got it. You know what? I think maybe... Be careful what you wish for. Yeah, that might be a good reason just to release them anyway if a million people show up. You know what? That's kind of thinning the herd, don't you think? Yeah. I'm not sure how many he can eat in one sitting, but, you know. Well, there are dietary restrictions for aliens that we don't know about. True. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I could name them here, but no one cares. No. No. But aliens have to watch what they eat. Because they have those slim waists and big heads. <laughs> Gigantic heads exactly. and eyes. Yeah. Yeah. And All right. crazy fingers. Well, so do you believe in aliens? Have you ever seen one? I know what you're saying. Do you have to see something to believe it? Well, I don't know. I guess that depends on how naive you might be. Well, I know that we're not the only galaxy, and the odds of us being the only life forms in all galaxies seems far-fetched. So, but maybe we're the most advanced society. Uh, hmm. We've taken definite big steps backwards in the last 10 years or so, but I, who knows? Maybe there's a, you know, some guys out there that are still in the Stone Age part. Might run into Fred, Fred Flintstone in one, uh, -ba -ba right? one planet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I can't say as I believe in aliens. I really don't think. I, uh, do I think we're the only form of life in the galaxy? I find that hard to believe. And I think that that attitude is a bit arrogant, honestly. Yeah. But see, what are the chances that if there are, we meet them and they are so far superior to us that it changes life as we know it? The chances, I would say, are about 50-50. Flip a coin. Exactly. <laughs> You're going to either eat or be eaten. But, Ronnie, I have always wondered what goes on there at Area 51, what they're so freaking protective of. It has to be something. Well, I mean, as, as this had said earlier, they are working on other means of flying, flying saucers or something more advanced than... That they're afraid to show us, though. Shouldn't we, as governmental taxpayers have those rights if they're just uh, do they think that what they're doing is protecting us from that why why somebody has to answer that question well i'll tell you the i think it's the f-22 is the raptor the newest jet uh i was working security at the air show when they first unveiled it and even me and i have top secret clearance even me with my top secret clearance could not get closer than about 50 yards to it. Wow. And there were armed Air Force personnel at every corner of the, the ropes. 
and one of them told me, yeah, this thing's going to fly today, but they're just going to scrape the surface of what it, it's actually capable of. I bet. And it did some amazing things. It did a, did a 360. It turned basically on its own axis, uh, which is it's crazy for a jet to be able to do that. Uh, and so if that's just scraping the surface, who knows what that thing is actually, you know. But we want to know. We want to know Area 51. I know what you're saying. You don't want to know. I want to know. Somebody want to know. Love to see your comments below. Yeah. I mean, we could start with the very basic, do you believe there are aliens? We could move to, do you think we're the only intelligent life forms in the galaxy? You could move on, well, you could move on to a lot of comments that you could make, of which we will read all of them. We promise to do that, and we will try to reply to each and every one. What if there I, was a planet full of dogs? Would that seems like it'd be the greatest planet ever, but what if we were their pets? Oh, yeah. We had to be on leashes. I, sometimes I think to myself, you know, I'm a human and I have a life, a real life. I do things every single day. But what about that tiny little spider I see? Oh, yeah. What life does that have? How long does it live? Yeah. A month? Three weeks? I don't know. But what about that little life form right there? What if what what we are is the superior being to what that little spider is? Maybe that spider has an entire life with other spiders at home. and You see what I'm saying? And I just killed it with my bug assault. I know. Have you ever seen one of those? Yeah, I have. Those are great. i got to get me one. It's a salt shooting gun. Let me see them aliens. I want to see them. I don't? Okay, all right. You, you really that. don't. All right. I to wrap it up today. I hope you had a good time. Subscribe to the channel. We really could use the uh, help. We're trying to get to a thousand right now. There's one right there. Hey, nice. And uh, we'd appreciate it if you'd subscribe and like the show. Um, all the information you'll need is below. You can find the link to our PayPal account where we are trying to raise money to travel to Santa Fe, New Mexico to meet with Mr. Forrest Fenn, the antiquities dealer who is a millionaire and he has hidden a treasure somewhere in four states in the Rocky Mountains. And we would like to go and visit with him. We can do it with your help. Make a generous donation to paypal.me slash men are so smart. You'll find that link below and uh, we will get back to you with our thanks. Uh, I'm Lou Gallagher. I'm Corvette Ronnie. Are there aliens? We'll see you.